Hey there, YouTubers. Happy uh, Chinese New Year, February 5th. Of course, um, here in Oregon, we're just closing out the day, the way the world works. Um, the days come to an end at the international date line. They start there as well. So tomorrow we'll be starting there. Uh, even as we finish out the day here, Hawaii gets it even later than we do. And then Guam, where America's Day begins. So I'm at the Anaconda screen. This is where I could fire up a bunch of different um, resources, including Python. What I like to show students is how you can have several environments installed. So if I were to go back to base here, that would be Python version 3.6, but I want to use 3.7 today. At the time of this recording, 3.8 is coming out just uh, for, for testing and hammering on for hacking. Uh, it's not, Anaconda doesn't have a, a 3.8 yet in this particular time frame, 2019, February 5th. So I already have VS Code running, and what this video does is it follows up on remarks that I made in an earlier YouTube about Waterman, Polyhedra in particular, which are made from IVM vertices. In other words, take a polyhedron and insist as a rule that all of its corners be at the centers of closest packed balls. And by that, I mean, let's go to some graphic that will help perhaps this one. Closest packed, starting with 12 around 1 in the cube octahedral pattern. And then as you add frequency, you get more and more layers, right? Now, what I'm going to do in this video, it's not going to take too long, is use linear combinations of these four basis vectors, the quad rays, to come up with the 12 directions you need to go from the center sphere to any of the surrounding 12. And once you're there at one of the surrounding 12, there'll be another surrounding 12 and another surrounding 12. We're going to do random walks from the center, from the origin, actually from the origin of a CCP packing sphere. So here's higher frequency, right, one, two frequency, and then three frequency and so on. This Jupyter Notebook is on GitHub at my 4D Solutions under Python 5 if you're looking for it. This this video, by the way, is, is for uh, literature teachers primarily who are trying to get a grip on how sort of philosophy was was going in the in the STEM in the STEM mirror, so to speak. You've got science, technology, engineering going on, and then in reflection, you've got some humanities things happening. And this is on that side of the fence. On the humanities side, we're developing um, this sort of philosophy, right? American transcendentalism and so forth. So you're going to pick the origin to start and then turn, turn in any of the 12 directions and go to a neighboring sphere, and then do that again and again, always randomly picking your direction. Now let's say one of those directions is called direction four. Let's say they're numbered one through 12. So you could go like direction four, four, five, one, nine, seven, and just keep going. So what we're gonna do here is get you to move um, a certain number of steps in each of the 12 directions. And it really doesn't matter. Addition is associative and commutative in this space. So we're going to do all, all of our movement in any one direction at once using the following function. Here we're going to look at VS Code now. So we're going to start with uh, the 12 directions, which the combinations here are all the permutations of 2, 1, 1, 0. So you'll find out if you write them down, there's 12 possibilities there, and those are in the 12 directions I'm discussing. And we're going to go a random number of steps in each of those 12 directions, some number between 1 and 1,000 or 0 and 1,000. We might not move at all in that direction. So we're going to go through the directions one at a time and move up to 1,000 steps in that direction. And by direction, I mean towards one of the... Um, 
12 spheres around us because we're in the IVM CCP packing. And by this means, uh, random walking, we're going to start with the origin and call that one of the four balls of our random tetrahedron. And then three random walks give us, give us P1, P2, and P3. Those will be the other three vertices of our four vertex random IVM tetrahedron. Then we need the six links. So we need like from the origin to each of those three points, and then going around that triangle that's not including our point, our starting point, there's a kind of a triangle out there that doesn't involve the starting point. That has uh, three edges, and we go around in order, P1, P2, P3, and back to P1. If you, if you can visualize that, so much the better. What I'm just going to do, though, is print out what the volume is every time we do this. So down below in VS Code here, I have a REPL ready to roll, and I'm just going to force a reload time and again. I'm going to just recompile the code, and this is the kind of code that actually has something to print out when you run it. Not every, not every module has to print anything out, but this one is going to print the edges, and it's not going to label them. It'll just spit out some numbers and then the volume of said tetrahedron in tetra volumes. So if you take four of those spheres in our sphere packing matrix and um, pack them tightly together, then that would be your tetrahedron. That would be our unit of volume. And that what we want to do is measure the volumes of our random tetrahedra in that unit. And we have a formula for that. It's inside the tetrahedron class. In fact, as you've seen in other videos, the tetrahedron class is a very thin wrapper around that volume formula. Really, that's all it does is let you store the six edges. And it's important the order in which you put those six edges in. you got to put the three rays out from the common origin first and then go around that opposite triangle in the same order. So get those in at the right order and then run it and see what you get for a volume. Remember, random walking here, and the volume, as you see down below, is precisely an integer. And this is what I was claiming earlier, that no matter um, what crazy tetrahedron we get, if we follow this rule of insisting that all four vertices be at the centers of CCP spheres, then we're going to have an integer volume. And that's what this is showing. And from there, it's pretty easy to conclude that the Waterman polyhedra in particular, because of how they're defined as having CCP sphere center corners, that they too have whole number volumes. So I hope that was interesting, and uh, we'll see you in a future video.